Okay, so this week we're talking about risk stratification and an overview of risk stratification is risk stratification is the process of grouping patients into different subgroups to identify the correct level of care each patient should receive. And this aids in directing care in the correct direction and improving the overall health outcomes of the patients. So the overall goal is to just put the patients into distinct groups of the similar complexity to their needs and um, to develop care models. So for the benefits of this, you have information about patients on both the individual level along with the population level. So on the individual level, you can create a personalized care plan for each patient depending on which level of care and level of risk they're associated in. And then for the population level, you can create a care model that is personalized to each subgroup um, to use as a basis for individual patients so you don't have to waste time trying to guess and determine what each person needs um, just from a basis of what is wrong with them. And then this also eliminates the one size fits all model, meaning that you don't just go in and everyone's treated the exact same at first. It's more um, specialized on your risk level. So the risk stratification groups that are common are the low risk group, which you're healthy or you have some minor complications from time to time, but it doesn't take a lot of effort to um, get rid of them or to treat them. And so the main goal with low risk is to make sure they're using the healthcare resources, but make sure they're not using unnecessary services. Then you have the rising risk or medium risk, which means you have one or two risk factors that need to be controlled. High risk is you have one or more chronic illnesses or risk factors as well that need a little bit more attention than the rising risk. And then the highly complex is those who have multiple chronic conditions with a lot of complexity that requires more um, work and effort to be treated. So connecting risk stratification to COVID, um, there was an idea to create a COVID aware risk score to help prevent death and severe illness due to COVID. Um, so to do this, we would put um, give each patient kind of like a score in four different categories to determine who needs what kind of care and the care model to be created. So the four factors that they were considering are the patient's previous COVID history. So that includes the test results they've already received, the cont contact tracing information that has also been received along with diagnoses they've had in the past. Then the current COVID-19 risk factors which means their risk of harm from a COVID infection. So this could be your pre-existing conditions, such as your age or other diabetes or anything else that you might have, and then work exposures as well. And then non-COVID-19 health status and needs. Half of this is gonna come from the electronic health record about your overall um, health conditions. And then what's not in there, which is a little bit more difficult to uh, address is the undiagnosed health or social problems. So while we're in a pandemic, everyone's stressed out and there could be a lot of things that we don't see in the electronic health record that could contribute to your risk of harm from a COVID infection. And then finally, your telehealth feasibility. So right now, that's the easiest modality to receive care. So knowing if you can receive care in that way will impact how you um, cope with an infection. And then this is the... Um, the graphic for those four factors leading into your COVID aware risk score, and then how you're going to use it uh, in the end, depending on what your score comes out to be. Um, so when we're talking about why would we use risk stratification, these are a few points that I came up with. Um, so for population health management, it is necessary to look at patients as both individuals and members of a community. Um, and by using risk stratification for the sake of the individual, you are taking steps toward developing a personalized care plan by placing them in a risk category that best fits their needs. Um, and by using risk stratification for the sake of the population, you are personalizing care plans for each individual and any level of risk, with, which then benefits the overall health of the population. Um, and the ultimate goal of risk stratification is placing individuals in distinct groups where their needs are similar in complexity to those also in the group. 
um, by sorting patients into different levels of risk and using care procedures made for that risk level, you are maximizing efficiency and improving outcomes because the procedures are mostly standardized. Um, and kind of as Sunny was saying, a one size fits all model is ineffective when creating a care plan as not all patients require the same intensity of care. So it is important to customize care based on the level of needs and outside factors a patient group has. Um, care models based on risk address different levels of need with an appropriate and flexible match of resources. Um, so how do you risk stratify? So there are quite a few different approaches to risk stratification, but this is kind of a more general look at the process. Um, it's important to look at any outside potential risk factors when assigning a patient's risk level. Things like physical limitations, varying social determinants, or special needs could affect the level of care a patient needs and how that care should be provided. Um, so a specific example could be if a diabetic patient is of advanced age at risk for fall and has a lack of transportation, they might be placed at a higher risk level due to these outside factors than a younger diabetic patient who does not have as many outside factors affecting their ability to access care. Um, some other examples include lack of financial support, higher risk medical, medical history, um, substance abuse, difficulty following treatment plan, and low health literacy. Um, these all have an imp impact on what level of care a patient might need, which ultimately affects what level of risk they would be assigned to or what, le what level of care they need. Um, so when assigning risk, there are six levels, beginning with level one and level two of primary prevention, level three and level four of secondary prevention, level five of tertiary prevention, and level six of catastrophic care. Um, identifying the burden of disease and determining the health risk status and considering a general care plan for each patient are all steps towards uh, ultimately placing patients at the level of risk needed to provide that correct level of care. Um, levels one and two are mostly focused on prevention of the disease onset, and most people placed at this level are healthy. Um, the main difference between level one and level two is that two care includes patients who are at high risk of actually developing the disease, where level one patients have little to no significant risk factors. Um, and level two focuses a little bit more on intervening with potential unhealthy habits and suggesting community resources that could benefit the patient in their preventative care. Um, levels three and level four are mostly focused on treatment of the treatment of disease and reducing the potential of rising risk. Uh, the main difference between three and four is that level three patients are on par for treatment goals and are stable whereas level four patients are not as stable and have not met their treatment goals. Um, level five is focused mostly on treating the late stages of disease and minimizing potential disability that might come with disease. So it's still focused on intervening with unhealthy lifestyle choices, which could help in minimizing any disability. And level six, which is catastrophic care, is mostly focused on end of life, end of life care and providing comfort. These patients are often in long-term facilities or in re rehab, rehabilitation facilities. Um, these patients are given resources like end-of-life support groups and other tools used to provide comfort in such horrible situations. So risk stratification and motion. Um, care management facilities, they often place patients, like Isabel said, in one of six different tiers, varying from high risk to no risk, but they also take into account that some high risk patients just refrain from using healthcare services altogether. Um, and then health organizations have their own choice what risk stratification method best serves their patient needs. So you could use a pre-existing algorithm like the American Academy of Family Physicians algorithm, or they could create their own systems algorithm, or some organizations just use their own clinical intuition method where they basically just rely off the physician's intuition to come to these conclusions. And then each healthcare system is different. Um, the two main steps of risk stratification for every system is identifying risk factors that are prevalent to the patient and then effectively connecting these patients with managed care. And there's not one single algorithm that can perfectly place a patient into a risk category, but most, most hospitals create their own algorithms. So main factors that these use in algorithms could include patient's age, chronic conditions, past hospitalizations in the past year, just to go about that. But then 
Physicians must also take into account the social determinants of health, like economic, social, behavioral needs to off. And that's why the physician level interaction is always good there too. And then, so what is the best method, method overall? Um, study found that practices who use their own algorithm had the greatest number of high risk label patients. Um, and that's probably not what you want because you want a little variety throughout the six tiers. And then while other practices relied on clinical intuition and they provide managed care to the greatest proportion of high risk patients just because they probably had that personal connection to the patient and knew where they'd be at. So ultimately the most effective way of identifying high risk patients and connecting them with managed care is by using both a risk stratification system where they use an algorithm and to look off of that and take points from that, but also relying on physician and clinical intuition to make that, to make that choice. So yeah, that's our project guys.